Welcome to On My Shelf. I'm Jess, and today I'm going to be talking about The Turnout by Megan Abbott. Um, so to start off with, I'll tell you a little bit about this book. Um, sisters Marie and Dara run the Durant School of Ballet. Um, they're, the two of them are rounded out by Dara's husband, Charlie. Um, all of them grew up in ballet and it also attended the Durant School of Dance when it was owned by Marie and Dara's mother. Um, they inherited it from her after she passed during a tragic accident. Um, Dara is the strong, stoic, unemotional sister. Um, she's described a lot in the book as being uh, darker featured, like emotionally as well as physically. She's got dark hair and that's balanced out by Sister Marie who's very light. She's carefree. She's very emotional. Um, and she is the softer sister with blonde hair and light features, um, again, both physically and emotionally. And Charlie, Dara's husband, uh, he also grew up in ballet, um, and he was a student at the Durant School of Ballet up until the time that his family moved away, and he ended up moving in with the Durant so that he could continue ballet. Um, at some point, he had an injury, and was no longer able to continue teaching ballet or dancing himself and so he kind of runs the school's administration and does everything from behind the scenes. So when we start the book, uh, Dara and Charlie live together in a house that she inherited from her parents that they pretty much, she's lived in her entire life and Charlie has lived there with her and Marie most of his life. Uh, at this time they hinted it that there was a bit of discord between Dara and Marie and Marie has moved into the attic above the school of ballet and that's where she lives right now um to kind of have her own independence from her sister and that is a bit of uh attention between the sisters because of that um, so one night, there's a terrible fire, and it doesn't demolish the school, but it definitely has to be repaired. So um, they end up getting a recommendation for a contractor to come in to help fix the school. It's coming up on nutcracker season, so things are going to be very busy. Um, and um, so one recommendation that they got was this contractor Derek. So Derek comes in and says, I can refurbish your school. It's going to look amazing. Um, you know, I have these ideas about how we can change the studio to make it into the school of your dreams, the thing that you always wanted. And Dara is definitely not on board with this. And she seems to be the decision maker of the group the majority of the time. But in this case, Marie steps forward and says, I'm the decider and we're doing this with Derek. Um, so, and Charlie is on board with that as well. And Dara is pretty much the only one that has reservations. Um, so the Nutcracker performance is just months away. They know that they need to get this done. So, um, you know, they say, okay, let's repair the school. Um, and for the first 75% of the book, there's not a lot happening, but what Megan Abbott does really well is tension. Um, even though there's really nothing, no events happening, the tension is just building and building and building. It's building between um, Derek and Dara, who don't see eye to eye. Um, it's building between... Um, Marie and Dara and their sisterhood and they're in conflict. It's building between Dara and Charlie and Charlie and Marie and Charlie and Derek. Everybody is having tension and the tension just escalates and escalates and escalates. And so even though there's really no event happening, this book had me hooked. Um, I was just turning page after page after page because I really needed to know what was happening and where this tension was going. Another thing that Abbott does really well is just these gothic, atmospheric, gritty scenes where um, you can just feel the tension down on you. She's so good at writing scenes like that. Um, and again, for the first 75%, nothing's happening. The next 25%, 
everything is happening and suddenly the story completely changes and just becomes whoa um so i want to tell you um i want to read you a couple of the quotes that i liked from the book and then i'll get into more about how i felt about it um so i love this quote it just happened and then other things happened and suddenly everything was happening and there was no stopping it which Dara now realized was how this character had viewed everything his or her whole life. Not going to tell you who the character is. Two people tightly twined can begin to convince themselves of anything. There's reality than their shared experience, which feels so much more real. So, um, unfortunately, I, in the end, really didn't like the turnout that much. Um, it did keep me hooked. Um, I, like I said, I, I, you know, I really felt like I needed to know what happened. Um, and I was very excited to get to the end of the book to see what the spoilers were. Um, but I felt, um, I didn't feel, <laughs> I didn't feel, um, like I just really enjoyed this book. Like it wasn't one that I came out at the end and was like, oh, I really need to tell somebody to read this. Um, and I was kind of disappointed in that. Um, but I feel that Abbott books are definitely hit or miss for me. If you're an Abbott lover, you will love the turnout. I think um, it just wasn't for me. Um, I do have to say she did a really, really great job. I think with... Um, and I know nothing about ballet, but for a lay person, I think she did a really great job um, let us see, letting us see the inner world of ballet. Um, and I, um, I did enjoy that part. Um, so I will tell you um, also um, some of the spoilers. So if you're ready to hear that, then get buckled up. If you have not read the book and you don't want any, please, please, please stop watching right now. <laughs> okay, so this is spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. If you have not read the book, please turn back now. Do not watch this. Um, so I'm going to tell you about the spoilers and then I'm going to tell you about what I think about all of those. Um, so Derek, the contractor, is just a really creepy guy. Um, you know, he comes into the school, he has this imposing presence, and it, he's not only a physically big man, but his presence just takes up everything, and it makes it seem, he feels so insidious to Dara, and nobody else seems to see that. Um, and that's a major point of tension between the characters, is that Dara feels this insidiousness spilling from Derek, and nobody else seems to see that or really care that Dara feels that way. Um, and the school ends up taken over by the renovations. Um, and it feels to Dara like her home is like being torn apart because this school has been just a huge part of her life. Um, and then Derek starts a relationship with Marie and it starts as a sexual relationship and then morphs into what I would describe as coercive control. Um, and Dara is obviously uncomfortable with that because that's her little sister. Um, and eventually Charlie also becomes really uncomfortable with the relationship between Marie and Derek. And he is concerned about Marie and her well-being, um, as is Dara. And Dara shows this in an extremely extremely cruel ways. She name calls Marie. She calls her stupid. Um, she's really not there for her sister emotionally. Like she is worried about her, but she doesn't seem to either understand or care about how to reach her in a better way. Um, so Marie begins acting differently. She's telling her family secrets to Derek. Uh, she ends up buying a car, even though her parents died in a car wreck and she hasn't driven since then. Um, she is just becoming a very different person and that's very concerning to Dara and also because the school is their livelihood that can potentially ruin their source of income. Um, and then she finds out that Marie has been trying to get the deed for their house, which Dara and Charlie live in. And in order for Derek to get the house and renovate it and sell it, which is another huge 
point of contention. Um, what do you do when your sister that you work with is having this relationship that is not only harming her, but then harming you and your husband? What do you do? And Dara doesn't handle this well at all. <laughs> um, one night, uh, Dara and Charlie go to the school to confront Marie, and there they end up running into Derek, who's coming down from Marie's room. They're on a staircase, and uh, Derek starts threatening them about um, telling people like their family secrets, which at this point are not revealed as to what they are. They're hinted out a little bit through the book, um, but we still don't truly know exactly what's going on. Um, and Derek and Charlie end up tussling, and Derek goes over the side of the banister, and the girls are in shock, Charlie's in shock, um, and so what he says is, okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna clean Marie's things out of the attic, we're gonna pretend that she wasn't staying here, we're gonna say that we have no idea what Derek was doing at the, at the school at this time of night, it was a tragic accident, so they clear Marie's things out of the attic, they go home, they pretend that it didn't happen, and in the morning, Charlie drives back to the school and says, oh no, I found this body. I have no idea how this accident happened. Um, the police come in and they pretty quickly decide, yeah, this is just a case of a guy falling over the staircase, like nothing to see here. Um, but there is an insurance adjuster who personally knows Derek um, that feels differently. And so she comes in and she's like, yeah, this is just really weird to me. I don't think this was an accident. And she tells Dara that Derek had a wife and kids, which was news to them. They had no idea about this. Um, so this is really like where the 75% where things start to take off. Um, and in between all of these things, we find out on a different storyline note that Mama Durant who is Marie and Dara's mother, had preyed on Charlie when he was a boy um, and had started an illegal, disgusting, inappropriate relationship with him. Um, um, prior, I think, even to him moving into their house, but it only continued amongst the four of them when Charlie had moved in. Um, and to clarify, Charlie is the same age as Marie and Dara, roughly. Um, so Mama Durant had kind of preyed on, not kind of, but did prey on all of them. And um, so those were some of the family secrets that Derek had been hinting at, um, that Marie had told him. So um, Dara then learns that the woman who had recommended Derek to Charlie, um, she goes and confronts her and is like, why would you recommend someone like that? And Mrs. Bloom, the name of the woman, um, had her own relationship with Derek, we find out. And also, she says, I never recommended Derek to you guys at all. And so Dara is trying to think this through. Who would have recommended Derek? Um, if not Mrs. Bloom, why would Charlie have said that if Mrs. Bloom didn't recommend him? And so at this point, she's kind of starting to put these pieces together. And she knows that Charlie goes to physical therapy so she drives over to where he has his appointments she waits outside and she sees Charlie kissing a woman and she just her mind kind of implodes but she stays calm she drives home she waits at the kitchen table for Charlie and he comes home and she confronts him about this and he says yes that's Derek's wife and we became close and we had talked about what would happen if Derek had just had a little accident. And when the fire happens, Derek, Charlie had seen it as his opportunity to, I don't know, plan something out like an accident or something that would seem like an accident. Um, and this is obviously extremely upsetting to Dara. Um, not only did he cheat on his wife, physically but also emotionally and then brought this man into their lives which has pretty much destroyed their lives as far as they can tell because the school is no closer to completion uh nutcracker season is going to be ruined and then he 
either accident and he says that he didn't plan to kill Derek but Marie or Dara definitely has her reservations um she kicks Charlie out of the house totally understandably um so um at this point um Charlie leaves the house and the next morning they find that Charlie has died by suicide and he leaves a note in his pocket um, admitting to killing Derek. He says that he's guilty um, and the police come and take his body away and they're like, case closed, but not really for the sisters. And they can start to confront some of the things of their past, um, what happened with their mother, what happened with their parents' car accident where their mother and father both died, um, who was actually driving that night, which it was their mother um, and Basically, they start to confront all of this family trauma um, that they have never spoken out loud about. And then at the very, very end of the book, their family home burns down. And Dara begins to see the way that Marie did, that this is a new start. Um, and that this is their way to escape the trauma, a way that they really couldn't unless they were away from that house. So thank you again for joining on my shelf uh, to hear me babble about this book. Some books that I'm planning to talk about in the future are Mexican Gothic, My Phantom Prince, which is about um, Liz Kendall's life with Ted Bundy. Um, also, We Were Here by Andrea Bartz and many, many other books. So please join me in the future. You can subscribe, of course, and you know this. So thank you again.